Hello, John back again. Uh, probably slightly scruffier than last time. Um, but I'm here to uh, share just a, uh, again, not short enough video about fraction division. Um, in the work we've been doing recently, that's by far the most common question is uh, people wondering how that works. And that makes a lot of sense. Division. Um, was the area of operations that we found the most challenging and now we're trying to apply that understanding with a kind of numbers fractions that people find challenging um, so uh, again uh, don't stress about it don't worry about it uh, we're try trying to grow our understanding um, to set up being able to make sense of these things right so when you guys were taught about uh, fractions most often it was with rules about this is how you do things, these are the numbers, do this if you see that. And instead we're focusing on making sense, on understanding the fractions by being able to visualize them and represent them, and uh, using our understanding of division, what that means, um, and to get kind of a double portion, right? So when if you get a chance to teach these problems in elementary school, uh, it's a chance to both work on your learner's idea of division, uh, which almost always needs reinforcing, and your learner's idea of fractions, right? Uh, so the fact that these problems are harder um, can actually be a good thing for a teacher. Uh, like we saw in Tracy Zager's book, uh, right, so challenging problems uh, can have surprising effects for motivation and uh, our learners coming to believe that they can do this, right? They're not being given easy stuff to do. They're being given challenging stuff to do. And this applies for you, right? So we're not focusing on answers. We're looking for process and use of um, representations. All right, so here's the problem we want to think about, the actual problem from our house. So uh, we order these family size 16 inch pizzas from Papa Murphy's. We like Papa Murphy's in general, but it's especially nice now because you cook them at home. You don't have to worry about germs or anything. Um, so uh, most of us like a serving size of about three pieces. Uh, I cut the pizzas into eight parts, so it's a three eighths of a pizza serving size. And we need two and a half portions. Um, because my spouse is trying to cut down on carbs and salt, so she just takes a half portion. Um, my son uh, would be another portion, but uh, he's a 19-year-old guy, so he pretty much needs a pizza all to himself. So anyhow, if we do uh, two and a half portions of this 3 8 serving size, how much pizza do we need? So uh, we, again, we want to think about it with representation. So if I badly draw a pizza here, and uh, I'm literally drawing a pizza and how I cut it, um, but it's a fraction, so we could use any kind of representation here. Right, we could pretend we got one of these rectangle pizzas and cut it into eight pieces. If that's easier to draw, work with that, and um, no harm, no foul. Okay, so here we've got one portion and we've got two portions. Now we need that half portion. So a half a portion, half of three pieces, there's two ways to kind of think about that. So we could think about it as um, half of the three pieces. Well, that'd be like one and a half pieces. So we have enough room even in this pizza to put the one and a half pieces. But how much is that, right? So if this was an eighth, we took half of it, it must be a sixteenth. Um, uh, Sixteen of these pieces, because two in each eighth, would fill up the whole pizza. So what we've got here is that uh, two and a half times three eighths is equal to kind of seven of the eighths plus an extra sixteenth. So we could think about that as 14 sixteenths using our equivalent fractions understanding, right? Chopping each one of those into two pieces plus that extra sixteenth. So we've got 15 sixteenths of a pizza, which is what we see from the picture. 
And you know that little half a piece is not going into the fridge. Somebody's going to eat that when they're cleaning up. Um, not going to confirm or deny whether it's me or not. So um, in this other representation, it would have been the same thing. Here's one serving of three eighths. Here's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. And then uh, these three sixteenths. Because that's actually the other way to think about it, right? So we had, we were wondering what was half of three eighths. We uh, did it one way, just kind of dividing up those three into half. But we also could think about it, well, let's take half of each of them. Then we've got half of it. And there you can really see the 3 sixteenths. Okay, so um, we want to remember multiplication and division come from these grouping situations. And we didn't know what the total was. And that's what made this one multiplication. So if we want to uh, be thinking about division, we're going to know the 15 sixteenths and leave out one of the other pieces of information. So for example, we could leave out the two and a half. So if we eat 15 sixteenths of a pizza in three ace pizza portions, how many portions is that? Uh, first, I want to take a second to think about, is this a fair share or a measure problem? So fair share is like 24 cookies given to four friends. Uh, they each get six. The answer is how much is in the group. And we know how many groups. The measure is uh, 24 cookies. We give out uh, four at a time. How many people can we give them to? Um, the number of groups is what we don't know. But we know how much is in each group. So this is a measure question because we know how much goes in the portion, but we don't know how many portions we've got. All right, and um, these problems can be relatively simple for fractions because we can just count out until we see how much we get, right? So we've got uh, 3 eighths, there's one portion. There's two portions. I'm to be careful, I'm making them look like spider webs. And what do we have left? We have this, which uh, we're lucky here, right? This could be messy. We've got this uh, one and a half piece left over. Um, so we could answer it like this. We could say 15 sixteenths divided by 3 eighths is two portions. But then we add some pizza left over, remainder of uh, 3 sixteenths, which was our 1 eighth, one piece, plus a half piece. OK, um, but it's nice if we can think about how much of a portion would that be. And we know from some of that work we were doing before that that is half of three pieces. So the other way to put this is to say directly, that's two and a half portions. OK, and we can see it just from the, um, just from the representation. These fraction representations are so powerful. That's how we want to uh, be able to think about it. Well, we could think about it with number as well, right? So um, we could do it like a running total. Right, so we've got uh, 3 eighths plus 3 eighths, that's 6 eighths. And it might make sense to think about um, this instead in terms of sixteenths, because we're trying to get up to um, 15 sixteenths. So right away we could see that, well, we've got 12 sixteenths, uh, so we only get, need 3 sixteenths more um, but that's not going to be a whole portion, right? Here was one portion, here was another portion. To do that 3 sixteenths, we need another half portion. Um, so this is like adding up 
how many 3 8 does it take to get us to that 15 16 which is one of the ways we understand um, multiplication and division. We've kind of turned this into a problem where uh, we're thinking of it instead of 15 16 divided by 3 8 is what? We're turning it into 3 8 times what is equal to 15 16 so we could keep track of that in a ratio table. And we want to use the, these numbers to think about what do we know, right, that's close to that. Well, uh, 3 times 5 would be 15. That gets us part of what we want to know. And then 3 eighths times 5, we know, because we wanted to get this 3 eighths here, would be 15 eighths. Because we've got 3 of the eighths, 5 of those is going to be 15 of the ace. So uh, we want to get from uh, 15 ace to 15 sixteenths, right? And a sixteenth of the, is a half of an eighth, but we can't take half of the three eighths. That's what we wanted to be in this spot. So we have to take half of the five. Now that's some pretty slick fraction reasoning. Right, to use uh, what's going on here. And later on, as students get more familiar, they might even be able to think about it directly as, oh, I know I want numerators to work out to 15 and denominators to work out to 16. But in elementary school, um, that's not really the level that we're working at yet, right? That's gonna come later with middle school understanding of fractions, hopefully. Okay, what about the last kind of problem? So um, if we know the 15 sixteenths and the number of portions, um, how much is in each portion? Now, uh, this problem, we know how many groups, we don't know how much is in the group. So this is a fair share problem. Um, and fair share problems with not whole number of groups um, tend to be as the most challenging kind of fraction pro problem. Um, because if we think about um, our 15 sixteenths of a pizza, we're trying to divide it up. I'm going to shade the part that's left out. Um, we're trying to divide it up into two and a half groups. What does that even mean? Right? Uh, we want to find a group size that if we have a whole group and a whole group and a half a group, it would add up to this much. Now we know the answer already because we've been working with this, these numbers for quite a bit. Uh, but we want to think about how can we use our understanding to find that answer. So um, I'm going to do it just like it was giving out those cookies from the prototypical fair share problem, right? So we've got a portion, a second portion, and then we've got a half a portion. And I'm going to think about it like we've got 15 sixteenths to give out. So one way to do it would be to say, I'm going to give a sixteenth to these people, and then I give a half of that much to this last person. So a half of a sixteenth would be a thirty-second. Yikes, right? Well, I could keep trying that. But instead, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to give this person a sixteenth. But they only get half of what the other people do. So I'll give these people another sixteenth to make up for it. Okay. So how much have I used up? I've used up, oh, sweet, five of my sixteenths. So I'm going to, I can see right here, this problem is going to work out really nicely. Because if I do that again, give two sixteenths to this person, two sixteenths to this person, and another one sixteenth, I've got a whole portion, a whole portion, and a half of those. And I've got exactly 5 sixteenths more. I had 15 sixteenths. So that's all of the pizza I had to give out. The half portion gets 3 sixteenths. And the whole portion then gets double that, gets 6 sixteenths. But using my idea of equivalent fractions, I know that that's 3 eighths. So this must be 3 eighths, also 6 sixteenths. That's really nice. So 
Um, it's a fair share problem, so the answer is how much in a full portion, and the answer to that is 3 eighths. So 15 sixteenths divided by 2 and a half is 3 eighths. But um, how could we do that? Could we do that with just the numbers? Um, well, we could think about this ratio table again, right? So we're trying to divide 15 sixteenths by 2 and a half. Now, it might be nice to work with 2 and a half as a fraction. So 2 is 4 halves. So uh, 2 and a half is the same as 5 halves. So turning this around, I'm asking 5 halves times what is equal to 15 sixteenths. So we can think about this kind of just like we did that last problem, right? We, well, we know that 5 times the 3 is 15. So 5 halves times 3 is 15 halves. And I've got part of what I wanted. I've got the 5 halves. I just want to get the 15 sixteenths now. So how do I get from a half to a sixteenth? I've got to divide it up into eight pieces, right? So a half of a pizza, if I divide it in two, that's fourths. If I divide it in four, that's eighths. If I divide it in eight, that's sixteenths. I can't divide this one because I've already got it to what I want. So I have to divide this one. Okay, so, so many different ways that we can think about how to put together these numbers. Just one last way that this would be a pretty slick uh, fifth or sixth grader to think about this. But we said we had 15 sixteenths divided by 5 halves. Well, I know how to divide by 5. If I take the 15 sixteenths and divide it by 5, uh, that would leave me with 3 sixteenths. And what does it mean when I divide something by a half? Um, so a kid who's working on this level, right, if you divide 1 by a half, you get 2. If you divide 2 by a half, you get 4. It's doubling. So in other words, if we do this, we're doubling it. We get 6 sixteenths which we know is 3 eighths. Or we could even say we're doubling the 16th and know that 3 sixteenths turns into 3 eighths. So many different ways these numbers fit together. And we want to present it in a way that kids can make those connections uh, for themselves and build up that network of connections that leads to uh, good number sense and a good uh, understanding of the operations. So that's it. I hope it was at least a little bit helpful to see all these different ways to think about this problem. Um, if you have more questions, of course, please ask. Thank you very much.